Hi guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Today we are working on the 1100 Yamaha V-Star and the most common problem with these bikes is the starter clutch drive. A lot of metal on metal sounds, bike won't start, that's what you gotta do. So let's get to it and I hope you find this helpful. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect our battery. It's underneath the right side cover. What we need to do is just disconnect one of the battery terminals. So I'm doing the negative because it's right here. Next thing we need to do is drain the oil. Your drain plug is towards the front of the engine on the left hand side. The next thing we're gonna do is take four Allen head bolts to remove this cover. It's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now you're gonna need 14 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove these two bolts that hold the kickstand, which becomes a little bit challenging if you don't have a lift. You might have to lean the bike against the wall. Then you have a two more 14 millimeters that hold this whole assembly, foot peg assembly with the shifter and the 10 millimeter right here to slip the shifter off. Just a little note here, when you disconnect these two bolts right here, you have uh, the harness that comes and there's a zip tie right in this place, I cut it where the wire is held to the uh, to the bracket here and then you disconnect it from this uh, area over here where we're going to be disconnecting the rest of the wires a little bit later so we can cut we can remove this big cover so again this was just two 14 millimeter bolts here and slipping off the the shifter right there so now we got this exposed so next cover we're taking off is the clutch uh, cable cover with this cover removed, we have the clutch mechanism here. So what we gotta do first, it's loosen up the clutch adjustment a little bit up here and gain some uh, free play so we could uh, remove that cable. When you loosen the adjustment up here, you can slip the cable off so you gain uh, free play on it. And then here you just have a little tab then you can take a small screwdriver let's see if I can show it and you bend this tab out of the way and then you'll be able to remove this cable from its place and just uh, tuck it away somewhere now you're gonna get to removing this big uh, side engine cover first disconnect the wiring that that it's uh, attached to it and then we're gonna take all of the five millimeter allen heads all around the cover off now I like to give you a little tip so you don't screw up when you're putting this back together I already took all my screws off the screws are all different lengths so what I did I took a piece of cardboard and I made a holes kinda in corresponding places where there are um, on the motorcycle so I know where the screws came from because for example this one is this long and then the top one is this long so you want to make sure that you put these bolts back where they belong so you don't mess anything up so the next thing you want to do because this bracket it's it's in a way to get this cover off you can unhook it back here and just kinda pry it up if you want to disconnect this uh, hose but I don't think you need to just pry it up above it and you can uh, move the cover out that way now the cover should just slip off another important thing when you take this cover off to look for there's supposed to be a little metal washer that goes over this clip you see it's not here. The reason why it's not there because it got stuck over here in the other side where it goes. Right there. So you want to make sure you locate that washer and slip it back on here. Last thing you need is not knowing about it and losing this and having it falling into the engine and that could make a mess. So next thing we're going to do is remove our spark plugs. There is one under the this cover. These covers just usually pull off. There's two grommets 
one here and one here they go here and there and the spark plug is right there the other spark plug is underneath this cover same situation two grommets again grommet here and this one it looks like it's missing and the spark plug wire is here you pull that out And there's our spark plugs. With our spark plugs removed, it's always good time to put new ones in. And next thing we're gonna remove is this cover right here. It, it covers the timing chain and the timing gear on the rear cylinder. It's very important that we get to it. So there's two screws right here, five millimeter allens. Okay, this is what it looks like with this cover off. It's literally held just by these two uh, five millimeter allen bolts. Guys, I also like to urge you to keep your stuff organized. So as we take in more parts off, uh, I have this towel on the ground and I have everything together. The first cover we took off with the bolts in, the shifter with the, with the bolts for the assembly, my uh, kickstand with the bolts, this cover, this cover we just took off, my diagram and this cover. I have it turned on this way so whatever oil is in that cover will drain while I'm working on the bike so when I put it in it'll be nice and dry next thing we have to remove the center nut you're gonna use an impact gun you can't do it by hand so unfortunately you have to have air compressor and the impact under the nut is a washer when you take the washer off you can actually see where the keyway is and what I do it might not be by the manual, but that's what I've been always doing and it works for me. That I time this keyway directly up the middle of the rear cylinder and it always lines up with this timing mark pointing down or up, whichever position the motor is in at the moment. So now what I'm going to do, you always want to move the engine clockwise. So I'm going to put the nut on loosely and with my spark plus remove I shouldn't have any problem to move this all around to have my keyway pointing directly through the middle of the cylinder and this is probably going to be on the other side then but you're also going to have this mark right here as a dot it's either going to be pointing straight up or straight down so let's do that. So I'm going to start moving this and I'm going to watch the mark up here. Once this dot's going to get straight up, I'm probably going to be very close to where I need to be. So what we're doing here, we are timing the rear cylinder. It's very important. It has to be timed right. So when you put it back together, the motorcycle will be right. So now I'm just going to move this by hand to put it where it needs to be. I'm so going to show you the marks that I made. I made one mark over here and over here that kind of gives me an idea what this gear was. I made a mark on the top of the, the flywheel. Here's the keyway that we were talking about. It's pointing straight up and I made a mark right here. So this needs to be pointing towards this pin. And up here, because the top it's kind of hard to see, it's hidden behind this cover a little bit. I made a mark right here in the middle. So it goes to the bolt or another mark here. Don't be worried about making extra marks. This way you sure when you put it back together, it's right. So now we're gonna get our puller. You can either order the special puller just for this part. Uh, from Yamaha or this one is just a standard puller from the auto parts store and uh, you had to go you might have to go to the hardware store to get yourself a longer three metric eight millimeter bolts so uh, the very important part of this process when you take in the flywheel off because the starter drive it's in the back of it right here that's the part of it that's we're gonna change and the important part is 
I make, if you will, a sort of a bib over here. I, I tuck this way under if as good as I can behind this, this starter drive and and put a rag on the bottom and over the engine because there's a possibility of there's a third gear in the back and there's a possibility of it slipping off and it's got a little springs and pins that you don't want to fall into the engine so once I get this off I'm going to explain a little better what is the risk and why I'm putting the this bib over here so I don't have to worry about where if, if it falls apart where my little springs and pins are because they're just gonna stay right here not bouncing off on the ground and stuff I'm gonna put my hand behind it try to hold the assembly together instead in case it pops out easy now I got some tension on this making sure all my marks are still good I'm gonna put my hand behind this and try to tap this I took a little convincing but it finally came off didn't fall apart I'm still gonna put my hand behind it pull this off carefully and set it down okay guys so we finally got to the point where we're gonna replace the damaged part this is our rotor that we just removed if you flip it upside down you're gonna see uh, three actually two gears here this one is the one I was telling you that's got the spring and pins there's a dot right here and that's got to correspond with the um, groove for the uh, I put it up here see the groove for the keyway and there's a dot right here so you can just pull this gear off put it aside and here are the the springs that I was telling you there's spr little springs and each each one has a pin inside it so make sure if it fell apart on you when you once uh, you was taking it off the bike make sure you count these and you got everything uh, and if you don't you gotta find it somewhere on the floor in the bike whatever so you got um, six little springs and six little pins so now with that out of the way we can pull this gear off after getting a little c-clip out there's a c-clip right here so let me get my pliers and we'll get that off so um, again the c-clip Halfway off, that should be enough. Keep this here so you can see it. Now we can next we got a large washer to take off. And now this thing should come off. Now we got all these five millimeter Allen heads that we gotta take off. I'm gonna use my air gun to make it easy. And now with all the screws off, we should be able to take this whole assembly out. Okay. I already see actually what happened in this one. There's a spring that holds these uh, little pieces on there and the spring broke so uh, that's the problem in in this old clutch okay now with our old one out of the way we can start installing the new piece we can drop it in like so align the holes and then we're gonna turn this and move it out of the way so we can get to our screws now I'm going to put some blue Loctite on my little Allen heads and uh, get that tightened up. Okay now with all these bolts nice and tight you want to make sure they are 
really tight so they don't come loose and with the Loctite it should help that. We're going to turning motion carefully set this back in. You have to keep turning it as you're setting it in. Next thing we're going to drop our bearing in. Same thing you kind of want to spin it and find find its sweet spot where it, where it just pops in. You see just like that. Next we have our washer and our clip. Make sure it's seated in good. And voila, our new starter drive it's in. It feels much better than the other one. So only thing missing is our uh, little springs with the pins so make sure each spring has the the little pin inside it like this and we are gonna set them inside these grooves you can use a little screwdriver to make sure they they all sit helps if it's not magnetized okay so now they sit in the edges and remember I was telling you about this pin this little dot it's got to align with the groove for the keyway and we can just carefully set this over our springs. We're going to have to kind of align it and push it down. It might take a little bit, like as you see right now, take a little fight. okay just like this so you want to make sure this sits flush and our little hole it's lined up with this groove for the pin and we have this assembly ready to go back in make sure you handle it carefully so this piece doesn't fall off as you're moving it around now before we start putting this piece back into the motorcycle I want to explain a few things to you you have a three places where your assembly has to lined up Bef besides your keyway right here that is pointing straight up as we explained earlier for the timing you have this set of gears this set of gears and you have also this gear which is your timing gear going up to your rear cylinder and this gear it's a split gear as you see what I'm putting here in, a, in with my screwdriver you see how that that gear it's it's actually split so you need to use the screwdriver when you're putting that piece in to line these gears up so you don't actually break that I've seen before where people didn't know that and they got the first part of the gear in and the second part is like this and they put the whole assembly in with the uh, impact gun and broke the gear in half the back one so very important here so everything's got to go in nice and smooth and once it's in we're going to check all our timing marks and we go forward then okay guys so i'm going to try to get this on the camera hopefully so first i'm making sure I'm aligning the key then I need to align this gear here okay there it went in You can see my mark this one it's right on the money there 
my top mark is right on the money the marks on the gear that I made right there and everything is all the way in you can see over here that it's pushed all the way in and my gear you can see right here on the gears that they're lined up so now I don't have to be worried and I can tighten everything up so now we're gonna put our washer back in and our nut there's no need to pull Loctite there So now our nut is back on, tightened up. Actually what I forgot to tell you earlier, which I did, is before you put all this assembly back on, it's much easier to clean your area out of the old gasket. So I already have that ready. So now I gotta clean the back of my cover and I can start putting everything back together. Okay, my new gasket is already on. I don't put any silicone on that. The only place I put silicone is right here where these two rubber grommets go through and I already put some on. So now I'm going to hold these wires out of the way so they don't get pinched. Also my washer is in place that we were talking about earlier. Make sure that's happened. And kind of try to hold the cover back some because the um, magnet here on the um, Rover is going to try to pull that cover in fast. So, let's try to guide it nice and easy. Like so. And now our little old guide will come real handy so I can just go and insert these where they came from next thing we can do is our clutch cable All of this is just exactly reverse of what we did when we were taking it apart. A clip here. I got my uh, adjustment back together. Clutch adjusted properly, looking about two millimeters free play. Next thing, make sure you put your drain plug back in and fill the engine back up with the oil. Okay guys, so I got my motor filled back up, got my clutch cable back. So next thing we're gonna do, uh, put our spark plugs back in, the little covers. This cover over here, uh, just wanted to tell you about that. It's a very common issue that they leak over here. The cover has an O-ring in it. So if your o-ring looks deteriorated, get a new one. Or if you're in a bind, put a silicone, a little bit of silicone over the o-ring, put that cover back on. We're gonna put our floorboard and everything else, hook up our wires back together. They only go in one way, each plug is different. Don't forget your zip ties to secure the wire for your stand up and I'm gonna put all this back together hook my battery back up and uh, we'll try to start this beast up okay guys so everything is back together my battery is hooked back up only thing missing is my little cover and uh, let's see if this bike starts So as you see the problem is fixed, the motorcycle was not able to start at all before I start doing this work. Uh, so hope this was helpful. Uh, it is a bigger job than your usual do-it-yourself uh, kind of job, but I think uh, 
if you have the air compressor and some of the tools that you've seen um, you can save yourself upwards of five hundred dollars on doing this uh, at home so anyway be careful follow the instructions and uh, you can leave me a comment down below and uh, thanks see you soon